So, considering that humans have only explored about 60% of Earth's land, and that doesn't include the oceans, it's not a surprise that from time to time we find things that are completely unexplainable, and in some cases are impossible. Yet, despite being impossible, here they are, right in front of us. In 2011, an organization called Ocean X was exploring and looking for shipwrecks. When on their radar, in the distance, they came upon something that was very strange to them. There was a shape roughly about 210 feet and of a shape in which no one had yet or has yet to see at the bottom of the ocean. When the SpaceX team caught this anomaly on their radar, they began to go in that direction. And the closer they got, the weirder things became. First of all, before they got close to the item, Ocean X reported that their electronic devices were starting to wig out a little bit as they got close to the object. But it only got weirder as they ascended onto the object, only to find something that no one in this exploration team had expected whatsoever. At the bottom of the ocean is what seems to be some sort of circular machine type device or at least some sort of structure that is so strange and so bizarre that it really doesn't match anything architectural that human beings have made, today at least. It was as strange as it was obvious that this thing looked like the Millennial Falcon from Star Wars. In addition to it, there was a gigantic rut in the bottom of the ocean floor, carved, scraped in one direction on one side of this thing. Speaking of these ruts in the ocean floor that seem to be a result of this strange device or anomaly, it obviously caused a lot of people to associate it with skid marks, as if it was a crashed flying saucer or something like that. And I mean, if you're gonna, if you were to ask me, I feel like whether it be Roswell or that shit that went down in Brazil or even this, we need to let go of this idea of crash landed flying saucers. These beings are not gonna cross through dimensions and speed of light and all this, this technology that they have that is practically magic to us only the crash on the earth that's not it's the same thing as the idea of shooting them down or going to war with them it's just not feasible if that is in fact what this is coming from a civilization off planet no there's no crash they're not they're not crashing they're not getting shot down it doesn't make that doesn't make sense that's another example of our hubris thinking that we are bigger and tougher than we are but we still got to kind of talk about this rut in the ocean floor that seems to be the result of this thing. There's a skeptical explanation and there's a structural. One of the scientists is quoted as saying, it is easily seen that the groove in the mound is much more narrow than the object. That obviously means that it didn't cause that ridge while it was scraping across the ocean floor. Also, the typical debris field is not what resulted. It clearly looks more like a stone quarry, a haul road and a created structure for the object. If a UFO had shields that protected it from damage, it would still throw up a standard debris field. I don't know how that's re relevant, but it's in the quote. And it would cut a groove into its final resting place, not create a ridge that looks more like a road. And this was described as being more like a road that led up to the, to the structure. Clearly, this is not an impact event, but is an excavation and a construction event. If the construction was by atmospheric breathing human-like folks, that's us, then it likely was done when the sea level was much lower. The chart below, I don't, do I have that chart? I'll try to find it. Uh, and it just so happens to turn out that the sea level there would have been much lower at 14,200 or 13,000 years ago. Very interesting. As far as Occam's razor goes, if we are saying that this is not a natural formation, which is what I think that we're kind of leaning in the direction of, it's way more likely that this was, this was a structure built by people, ancient people, long the fuck ago, that eventually with rising sea levels, as we had with the Younger Dryas, became submerged at the bottom of the ocean. 
The members of the Ocean X team were confused and they kept it to themselves for a bit. They really didn't know what to make of it. The funding wasn't quite there to be able to go in, go ham on in some kind of investigation. This portion of the ocean is actually somewhat difficult to navigate because of the pressure of the water. The SpaceX team returned to the same site in 2012. The team was able to gather the funding to go back and get better images of this whatever it was. Unfortunately, those images were not captured and we are today stuck with only the radar images of the of the craft of the anomaly. Let's call it the anomaly. And the reason for this is because they had the same malfunctions that they had the first time, sort of eliminating this idea of it being a fluke. The leader of the Ocean X team is quoted as saying, anything electrical out there and the cell phone as well, it all stopped working when we were above the object. And apparently any proximity of about 200 meters from this object, their cameras wouldn't work, which causes some skepticism on my end because that seems like one of those things where somebody wants to get funding for something but is exacerbating their find in order to get it. We do have radar images of it that can be translated into art. Some of the art has been exaggerated and you really got to look out for that. But some of the art accurately depicts what is seen on this radar. It caught the media. They went forward with it and there was an absolute frenzy as you might expect. They were able to take samples this time around to maybe get a little bit of an idea of what the composition of this is. The samples that they brought back were said to be limonite and geothite. I hope I'm pronouncing those correct, but it was said by the team that this is not necessarily a substance that occurs naturally without some sort of artificial intervention. However, important to note that a man named Frederick Klingberg said that the substance resembled no duels, which he said, in fact, despite being rare, does occur naturally. So that's one of those things where you have to kind of decide for yourself. This structure that was found underwater has symmetry, angles, and edges and corners in which strike the viewer as very, almost sci-fi. This has caused all kinds of speculation about it being a flying saucer or some kind of the mana from the uh, ancient days of the East. The skeptics who are saying that is a natural formation caused by icebergs moving rocks agree that this seems to be about 12,000 to 14,000 years old. And that seems especially interesting considering that the Younger Dryas incident, the cataclysm that affected everything, happened 12,800 years ago. And it's also kind of strange to think about that the ancient legendary story the Mahabharata also is said to have taken place about 14,000 years ago the reason I bring that up is because it sure does look like that this Baltic Sea anomaly looks a lot like the Millennium Falcon F Falcon the Millennium the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. It looks so much like it that you can't help but ask some questions. And it just so happens to turn out that George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars, has actually admitted openly his entire premise and idea for Star Wars, The Force, and, and these movies is based off of the Mahabharata. In fact, it's not loosely based off of the Mahabharata. In George Lucas's own words, it is pretty much a retelling of this ancient Vedic story. Story. You can read for yourself in the Mahabharata, or also worth looking into is the Bhagavad Gita. It speaks of a war in heaven. This ancient text talks about spaceships, battles in the sky, different planets. It speaks of extraterrestrial life, and it speaks of deities. Within this text, there are flying machines, vimanas, that are said to be powered by circulating mercury, which we know today actually is used by the US government in order to make anti-gravity devices. 
The people who designed the Millennium Falcon, I couldn't really find a lot of substance for where they drew their inspiration from. But I, being a fan of Carl Jung and the collective consciousness, I can't help but think that if there is a connection here and they were deriving their inspiration from George Lucas's vision, then perhaps it's possible that as human beings who have been human beings for thousands of years might have tapped into the sort of Akashic field, this, this record of information that we are endowed with that we accidentally tap into from time to time. The Mahabharata also depicts what is strikingly similar to nuclear weapons being used. No, they gave me like the casing for it, but they said that they'll have to send it. Where's my keys? What? Where's my keys? I don't know where your keys are at. Why would I have your keys? Within ancient Hindu mythology, it is said that some of these weapons used in the Dronaparva section of the Mahabharata, it is said, this passage tells of combat where explosions of final weapons decimate entire armies. The passage tells of combat where explosions of final weapons decimate entire armies, causing crowds of warriors with steeds and elephants and weapons to be carried away as if they were dry leaves of trees. Another passage explains that when a weapon like this is invoked, it will cause the oceans to boil due to its heat and earths and mountains will float in the air. Boy, what are you doing? I'm reading about nuclear weapons used in ancient India. What do you think? Cool. What makes these weapons in the Mahabharata seem so striking to nuclear weapons is the fact that it is said within the text that people not even involved with these battles would die slowly of some sort of disease where their fingernails would fall out, their hair would fall out the pigment of their skin would become pale. Sure signs of radiation poisoning. And this is in a text from ancient Hindu mythology. One of the first books ever written, philosophers alike all kind of assumed that the homeland of the Mahabharata was in India. So they would look for signs of nukes being used there, such as C-9-129, which is a result of nuclear blasts. But there is more than one place that happens to be rich in Xenon-129. A place that is so rich in this Xenon, we can't help but sort of know for a fact, despite it being impossible, nukes were detonated in this place. And that place I'm speaking of is Cydonia, a giant flat surface on Mars. Mars is a bit of an anomaly itself, the amount of Xenon-129 found there. Not to mention giant ruts and what seems to be plasma blasts of canals that were not made from water flowing, but from great destruction. And what's important to remember about that is, yes, Mars used to be a blue planet covered in water and vegetation. We know that now because of methane levels that are detected there. But we can tell a difference between an ancient dried up riverbed and a canal that was blasted, what seems to be sort of an impact zone. In fact, there are places on Mars that seem to be clear-cut indications of nuclear blasting or testing of a magnitude that dwarfs anything yet to be detonated on Earth. So this information was not only kind of swept under the rug, but as most things that today's science can't explain, wasn't really talked about. If it's deemed to be impossible, despite there being evidence, we just kind of look past it. But something happened in 1976 that caused that information to become a lot more interesting. A NASA scientist going through some of the photographs taken by a Voyager passing by the planet spotted something very odd. 2.2 miles in size was what seems to be a giant structure of a face, of a human face. Stranger yet, nearby the structure seems to be other structures, such as pyramids and oddball shapes that typically don't occur naturally. In fact, some of the so-called pyramids that are said to be near the face on Mars take on the formation of the pyramids in Giza. It's that same layout, that one, two, three, that Orion's belt, that Sirius B star system. That's a very strange coincidence, I mean, on its own. But NASA 
I guess being a bit premature and looking for funding, released the photo. And it caused the press and everyone everywhere to just lose their shit. Everyone went insane over this thing. In fact, the attention was so belligerent that NASA was actually forced to, or I don't know what the coercion was, but they retracted their statement. In fact, they had said that secondary photographs taken proved that this image, this face on Mars, was actually an optical illusion due to shadows. NASA was asked to produce this photo and release it to the public, but unfortunately they just, they wouldn't do it. We'll get back to that in a moment because they released a photo of their debunking, but there is a wild plot turn whenever we get there. Just give me a moment here. A couple interesting things to note about Cydonia, this place on Mars where the face is. This was a perfect landing site for Mars rovers. Roll around considering how flat it was. However, ever since the press explosion about this face on Mars and this area called Cydonia, NASA has now refused to land any rovers into that area despite it being flat. In fact, they are sending rovers to much more rough terrain to avoid Cydonia altogether, aggravating many NASA employees who have come forward and said, why are we landing in mountainous regions when we could land in the flat of Cydonia? But despite the common sense and logic there, Cydonia is absolutely off limits, it seems, for NASA, or at least for the information that they give us. So NASA released this image of the face on Mars in an attempt to gain funding. Everyone went batshit and then they tried to retract it as fast as they could. Public pressure went on to NASA to produce a photo that indeed, as they had said, proves that this face on Mars was an optical illusion. So despite denying that several times, eventually they were forced to release something. And the photo that they released is the biggest insult and slap in the face to us, the people who fund NASA, that has ever happened. NASA produced a picture of the face on Mars that appeared to be flat, but after it was released, as funny as it is, they didn't realize that Photoshop artists and people of graphic design all over the world can simply see what they had done. And all they had to do was simply take the filters off. One of the men in particular, Lan Fleming, discovered a second image in the archives of NASA. This image was sort of lost within the archives and it was difficult to find, but it was a crystal clear picture of the face on Mars, undistorted in such a way that he could actually take measurements and see the geometry of this strange item on this dead planet. After discovering this lost and or hidden picture that NASA had taken, he came forward about the previous image, that second image that was meant to debunk this. And he had said that hoax by NASA to be the most destructive scientific hoax of all time. And he was able to actually prove without a doubt there was negative contrast filters used on this image in order to make it appear flat and even concave. He found up to 14 filters used on this NASA photograph in order to debunk their own research. And this is after the public had already came to the conclusion that the photograph was bullshit. A lot of people today don't remember that part of the story. And in fact, if you look this up online right now, that's the photograph that they go with. Google will go with the photograph that has literally been factually debunked by professionals. And NASA has nothing to say about it. It's, a, it's very strange. What is there to hide? However, Let's talk about this third photo. The, the photo that Lan Fleming found that was hidden and archived in the NASA files. What he found puts a whole nother angle on this entire story. Because what he found is that the face on Mars is, believe it or not, symmetrical. This is absolutely impossible. 
The two sides on the face of Mars match each other. Horizontally, top to bottom, left to right, it is a mirror image of the other half, just like you see in the Sphinx and other ancient technological megastructures. In fact, the eyes line up. The mouth is perfectly in line with the eyes. The nose is dead center. And most importantly, there seems to be a platform around the face on Mars that is an elevation up from the ground level of Mars. The platform even itself that the face is on is also symmetrical. This formation is mathematically precise. Despite possibly millions of years of erosion, you can't get rid of symmetry in an artificially built structure. The term pareidolia is when somebody associates faces with not animate objects. We see faces in concrete and wood and all the time. So this could easily be a case where we see a mountainous region on Mars and it kind of looks like a face and everybody freaks out. However, your eyes aren't tricking you in this case when you see this face on Mars. All over the landscape is what seems to be scattered ruins, right angles, ancient buildings, monoliths, tall monoliths, some of which are said to be higher than skyscrapers, but narrow. Five-sided pyramids and other just very strange things. When you think about the fact that Mars was once in the Goldilocks zone, the same as Earth is currently, when Earth was a boiling planet, Mars was habitable. It all of a sudden doesn't seem so strange that there was life there. If the life there is what is responsible well, I mean, that face, it looks a lot like a person, doesn't it? At this point, it is merely speculation, but I can't help but think about the timing of this whole thing. Mars becoming a dead planet due to some sort of nuclear war, a war in heaven that was mentioned in the Mahabharata. That event having taken place about 12,000 to 14,000 years ago, and then this Baltic Sea anomaly being dated to about 12,000 to 14,000 years ago. This timeline is something where you really can't prove the connection, but I mean, it's a lot of fun to speculate. And why not? This is one of those things where if you were to tell me that the face on Mars is a fluke and despite its mathematical precision is a natural structure, I would believe that if it wasn't for NASA getting busted, releasing that second photo that was such an obvious fake that it was embarrassing for NASA. Yes, NASA lies a lot, whether it's for power, for funding, or for whatever. I don't know why, and it's a huge question. It deserves its own video, but NASA lies constantly. In fact, the pictures they send back of Mars are often just colored orange. In fact, sometimes pictures of Mars are of Earth, and we've proven that. There are pictures of places on Mars you can go there now on Earth and take a picture of it and it matches the picture on Mars. They are consistent liars. It doesn't mean the Earth is flat. We can't connect those two things just because somebody lies all the time. Is it possible that there was an advanced civilization on Mars millions of years ago that were humans? or some variation of human beings. And what are the chances that whenever some sort of nuclear war took place, the powerful, those depicted as gods here on Earth might have possibly escaped Mars in their vamanas, that they're in, in their legendary vamanas, made it to Earth. What if that is what sort of maybe explains why we are so different from the animals? I've mentioned a million times in various videos that we seem to have a divine spark, some sort of half animal, half God. Can't help but make you really get out there wide with speculation as to how we got here in the first place, why ancient texts like the Mahabharata exist in the first place. How is it that the first writing that man ever made seems like a sci-fi? That's very strange. What can be debated is the speculation of the connection between the two of them. I'm not betting all my money on a connection between the two of them, but it sure is interesting. All of these little dots that can be connected. There's a large chunk of human history that we're missing. And in turn, of course, there is a huge part of us that is missing, a part of our character, a part of our personality. Where we come from and our memories is what makes us who we are. To be denied 
that information by any organization like NASA, who we pay for their funding, is an absolute insult. Not only what is this thing in Cydonia that you're hiding from us, but also why all the bullshit? What is there to hide? Why are we hiding it? Whenever you find something this mysterious and the more questions that are raised, it seems as if the less give it the funding that it needs to find answers. Is that a conspiracy or is that lack of public interest? I don't know, but there is a missing piece. We deserve to know about it and speculations should not be shunned upon because everything at one point was a speculation. The fact that the stars in the sky were suns and had planets was a speculation that caused Gianno, Gianno Bruno to be burned at the stake. The city of Troy was merely speculation until archaeologists found hard evidence of that city existing. The list goes on of things that have been speculated on and conspiracized about, theorized about, that have come true later. So don't be shy when it comes to outlandish theories. Not only are they fun, but sometimes they come true.